my name is Philip Martin, and I am the co-owner of Philip Martin Gallery here in Los Angeles with my wife, Portia Hein, that some of you might have met at the fair or at the galleries. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in our art fair booth and, of course, uh, in the gallery should you be in Los Angeles. Um, this is, of course, unusual for us not to be in Miami at this time, so we're missing our friends, but our hearts also go out for everyone uh, during this time of COVID. Um, it's been a challenge. It's been interesting. It's been an interesting time. Um, I'm delighted that Art Basel made it possible for us to do a booth walkthrough. We have some remarkable art um, in the booth, uh, and I'm really happy to be able to invite Holly Coolis. Do you want to raise your hand there, Holly? And uh, Katie Cowan. And uh, we have uh, Tomri Dodge, Pam Jordan, and Christy Luck. Thank you guys all so much for all the work that you did and thank you for giving us your time here to uh, speak with uh, everybody. This conversation is gonna take about, you know, we thought about half an hour and we're gonna go sort of in alphabetical order and highlight some things. So here we are with Holly working in the studio here in Athens, Georgia. How do you like being in Athens these days, Holly? Um, I like it. It's, it definitely uh, is a place with more space than New York, especially in the studio. So that feels really good. And it's quiet, <laughs> which is nice. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful town. Um, you know, I'm always going to miss New York, but it's great for working. Well, I think it's an interesting time with regard to how people are, of course, communicating virtually. And here we have beautiful works that people would love to see in person. Um, has working at a remove or giving yourself more time changed your practice in any way? You know, I think so, probably in ways that I'm not entirely conscious of. Right. Um, so, but I think definitely, I think having space around you to think and, and quiet and time to process, you know, in, in, um, in my former life in New York, it's like yeah. constant information, constant stimuli. And now it's sort of like, yeah, nothing's really happening. Well, also so. I feel, now I'm sitting here feeling guilty because I'm from a killer college town myself, Bloomington, Indiana, and I don't want to have some bias, in, some what, coastal bias in there because it is remarkable what, um, what the, those places are like and really beautiful too. So do you want to talk to us about this new painting that you did, Layover Lemons? Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> Well, I guess what's new in this painting is, I mean, sort of new, uh, are, are these lay, layovers. I mean, I'm kind of an obvious titler, but um, <laughs> yeah, just sort of having things overlap and using that as a way to create new shapes and uh, maybe um, a space that has more, more depth as opposed to being completely flat. It's, and, and also maybe there's a kinetic element in there um, I'm sorry, where you can sort of, Im where I kind of imagine things like sliding around within the canvas. And then this is sort of like a freeze frame of that. Did this work come together through drawings? Talk to us a little bit about how uh, you build your pictures. Um, I do, I make a lot of little tiny, very quick uh, drawings. And um, I make them very quickly, you know, like I'll make, I can make one in, you know, seconds, and then I go to the next one, and it's sort of just, it almost becomes like, um, uh, what do they call it, when people think uh, freely. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and, and a lot of times I think, oh, this isn't good, or this is stupid, but I just, I just keep going, and then I'll close my sketchbook, and often, not always, but sometimes I'll go back months later and think, oh, there's something in there. Maybe a drawing that I really didn't like will contain an element that I find interesting mm -hmm. and we'll revisit. So that's an important process for me just to sort of let things out and not, um, not try to stop my thoughts or judge them too much because I can be pretty critical. So 
<laughs> well, still life, of course, historically is in this interesting place because it's depictive in the history of painting in terms of showing a, an a interior, showing a place, but it also very much verges into abstraction and allows for those kinds of possibilities. And when you talk about drawing things that you know so well, uh, like a lemon, which in, is inherently a kind of shape the way you paint it, it then allows this kind of very immediate response. This piece, which you made for our Basel Miami Beach is called Drop Leaf Lemons. And of course, makes me think of the drop leaf table perhaps from overhead. Do you want to talk a little bit about it? Um, yeah, you know, I wasn't thinking about a drop leaf table initially. Uh, and then after I made the painting, I was like, oh, that's exactly like a drop leaf table. So, <laughs> which, which I actually work. I, it's, I don't have a drop leaf table, but it's a table in my studio where the sides fold down. Yeah. So I wasn't thinking of it, but I literally draw on it. So it was, it was somehow in there. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in still life as a, as a place for contemplation and, and um, I think geometry is mm -hmm. me really contemplative. And I, I love the sort of meshing of those two worlds and, and the sort of spaces that they can create. Yeah. And so you've been talking about moving to more towards abstraction in some of the work and what that feels like. And of course, this is a, a larger painting that was 50 by 60 that you did for freeze. Like, you know, everyone in the program, people have been making work for fairs that haven't been seen. And this is a nice chance for people to get a chance to see some other works that they hadn't been able to see in person. I'll just show a couple of the pieces that you did for Freeze. Um, do you want to talk just a little bit about sort of this approaching abstraction on a larger scale that you're starting to, that you've been exploring and working with? Um, sure. I, I mean, you, this was sort of the start of the, of the really overlapping. And um, I guess in a way there was, the, these pieces became more about lines and, and sort of a movement of the linear uh, I guess elements. You know, I I, I hate to see say what inspired this because <clears throat> he's such an amazing painter that I I don't want anyone. You know, I I don't want to invite a comparison. But I I did see a beautiful Bryce Martin show uh, in January of 2018 yeah. that just sort of blew my mind and. Um, I, I was in no way trying to uh, imitate, but I, I think those sort of like, the sort of um, dance of his line work stayed mm -hmm. with me. Well, things really sort of stay with you and come out through, through the practice. In terms of sort of starting to make different kinds of work or pushing the practice, this is Katie Cowan here. She is standing with a outdoor sculptural work uh, and we're featuring an outdoor sculptural work here at our Basel in Miami Beach. Do you want to talk a little bit about sort of pushing your practice and some of these, this whole thing that we're doing? Yeah, sure. So um, this year has definitely afforded me the time to try and figure out freestanding sculptures, which is something mm -hmm. I've been wanting to do. And the piece that um, Philip's showing right now that's like featured in this, this particular booth is the largest freestanding work that I've made yet. And this is one, um, over the past few years, I've been working with the subject matter of the tool of just a rope, just like a very simple tool, which is a common theme in my practice. Um, and I've been working with the rope for a few years now because it just keeps bringing up different associations. Like I keep trying to get away from the rope, but then something else happens with it and I, and I get kind of stuck working with it. Um, meaning like the rope will pull up kind of associations with the interior of the body, like intestines or placenta or river patterns or lightning patterns, or just quite simply like the rope as it is, as a tool. Um, and for this piece, uh, I just started with a rope uh, affixed to a board in my studio and then I just totally disentangled it, um, had it remade in aluminum at the mm -hmm. foundry. So um, sometimes 
people like don't understand that they're looking at a solid aluminum object. So I just think that's important to pull out. Right. So to reiterate, <laughs> basically everything that you're, this is a freestanding piece. It's almost your height. We're yep. in your studio here, which is where we shot it. Um, mm -hmm. This is all cast aluminum, including the rope. So laying out the rope allows you ways to create line, to create shape, to create spaces. And what you're describing to people is that in addition to working with the rope as you find it and using it as a line work and using different gauges of rope, I guess you would say, you also yeah. are able to untangle it and create these incredible kinds of both knotted structures and also kind of these, as it starts to uh, fully unfold, uh, almost capillary like line moments. Yeah, it becomes, yeah, it starts as obviously this really solid dense object, like a rope that we know and then totally takes a different shape in nature. And it's exciting to get these back from the foundry then because, you know, I, I compose them, I get them made in metal, and then I get this thing back and I'm like, what am I going to do with this thing now? And mm -hmm. that's that's kind of when I figure out how I want to paint it. Like I don't have this idea of what I'm going to do when I'm preparing it to be cast. So this one, when I got it back and when I welded it together, um, it just really, really immediately pulled up um, reference to uh, just, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, the water movement at, on the like Northern California beaches here. So um, being at the beach, you know, at sunset, noticing the different um, light play on the water, how the water kind of looks like metal and paying attention to that. Mm -hmm. But seeing how the all the ropes at the bottom there just kind of look like they're ebbing and flowing and collapsing mm -hmm. and kind of taking over one another. I really wanted to pull up that reference of the water and see if I could somehow capture that same sort of activity yeah. in a solid object. That's really I was beautiful. trying to figure out how to like capture time in That's objects. That's really beautiful. And I want to, obviously, we have a number of images in here, so people might have to forgive us as we might flip through some stuff. But it's really interesting yeah. to hear you say that, because, of course, this almost is like a sun. It is almost like you're looking into the landscape on this piece. And you talk about landscape, but, he, but actually, I had not, of course, seen that yet in terms of this, this piece and seeing exactly what you're talking about in terms of the water coming in on the beach and seeing this just gorgeous, like almost, I don't wanna get crazy, but Tatooine like double sunrise over this. And another thing too that I'd like to point out here to people that you can really see, here's this in the, in the image that we're looking at, is also this beautiful play in your work between what's real and what's depicted and how once yeah. you get into working on the sculpture itself and it, it, it becomes a place for painting, you know, here we have these moments that are kind of doubling the lines or turning these areas into vistas or it's just gorgeous. Oh, thanks. Yeah, and I also just like to like flatten it too and make you realize you're just looking at a rope on a piece of like crappy plywood board. <laughs> so I have to like pull you out of that that kind of um, <laughs> romantic association you might have with it. Which is, so this I is think just another piece of yours also shot outside. So I should yeah. also say that of course, you know, everything is obviously, there. things are for sale. If they're available, people should ask me about that. And people have shows coming up. So Holly Coolis has a show coming up with us with the spring and um, Katie Cowan will also be doing a project in the fall with um, we want to really work on doing some of these outdoor pieces that you've been working yeah. on and, and that. And so these are painted, of course, but they're painted in such a way that they, they can go outdoors. And this is another piece that is just, it's just gorgeous how it creates perspective and, and different, different kinds of, of pieces. So anything else you wanted to add? I didn't mean to, to rush you there. Um, I don't think so. I, I, I mean, I know we're like, just doing little segments, but maybe if there's any questions at the end. Okay, and if people do have up. questions, you can put them in the chat or the Q&A. Um, if people will try to get to those. Um, Tom Marie, so this has been a big year for you. We've done a number of, of little of exhibitions and um, you have had this interesting thing for me, which is that, you know, this is our show where we've shown very large paintings. This year, you also shared with people your painting from observation in terms of, say, 
you know, going into what Katie was saying, a little bit of a sense of how landscape and abstraction and flatness and depiction can work. Um, but of course, you know, these bigger paintings um, are a huge, are, or how, are what we've shown in sort of a lot of the work that people are familiar with. Do you want to talk about New Rig, one of your first, one of the first paintings here that you did for Art Basel Miami Beach? Um, sure. Yeah, this painting, this painting went through uh, a lot of different changes. Um, you know, it's like the kind of the, the way I've been working the last few years is, is and I've said this, you know, I, I know when, when we've spoken before, and, you know, um, I, I feel like I've been saying this a lot, like kind of explaining how I like make work a lot lately. So hopefully people aren't bored. But um, uh, uh, so I usually, you know, I tr I'll come up with some idea for a painting. I'll s start working uh, along those lines and inevitably like that kind of falls apart or hits a wall or something. And, you know, so you move to the next idea and, and, and you know, kind of uh, that one will fall apart, or, you know, this, so it goes on and on and on. So you, you, like these collections of bad ideas are what the paintings end up being. I think, or, or kind of failed ideas or something. Um, and, you know, so it's kind of like this process of like, you know, working past all these, this series of ideas. And then you, you know, in the end, you kind of get to like this, whatever it is. It's like, it's just, a, it's a painting and it's, uh, you know, it's like, a, it's, it's just a fact, you know? And, and, okay. and, um, you know, and then, you know, I usually have to figure out what to call it or something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's uh, this this painting. You know, took a long time to to work on because I re the idea I came up with originally I really liked, and that usually means that the paintings are going to be really difficult. <laughs> it, it takes a it takes a really long time for me to like give up on that idea and let it uh -huh. go, so I can like move on and make you know make the painting. You know, yeah, is that from the pr the pride comes before a fall department? Yeah, yeah, I think something like that for sure. Yeah. You know, and also, you know, it's like, you know, I, you know, I fall in love with these ideas, you know, yeah. I think like, you know, everybody does, or, or like artists tend to do, you know, you fall in love with your, your own ideas, but in the end, they're just ideas. So, you know, in, in my case, like, I really, I need to like, at some point, just let them go. And, you know, does usually that, whole I, that thing often that, means like painting. Hmm? Does that whole thing that, that uh, Katie was just talking about in terms of, you know, you lay out a rope structure without really, you know, you're doing that. And then suddenly you're doing something else with this structure that's embedded in your art object. Does that yeah. resonate I in think, any way? Yeah, I think for sure. I think there's definitely uh, probably some similarity that, you know. Because this um, painting has all this underlying moment. Oh, yeah. Things change so much. This is mm -hmm. called Enigma. Yes. And um, yeah, kind of, you know, it's like, you know, maybe not the best title, but I, it is, you know, I think it was, it's an accurate one, uh, mm -hmm. maybe, or it seems so. Um, yeah, it's like, yeah, it, it, this painting actually started with that triangle pattern, just, um, you know, because sometimes I'll just start there with something like really basic, like, you know, paint a bunch of triangles and then, um, you know, do something to that and do something to that, you know. At one point it was like, it, this painting was like, it, it was like a big mushroom, which I thought was funny. Um, and uh, then, you know, I, uh, it, it, I, I liked that for like a day, you know, and then, <laughs> and then it, uh, I needed to change that. Um, what about figuration and and uh, your paintings now, we've got, we're seeing people in a way that, I've, that have always been there, but they're maybe more clear now, or there's, you've always have a sense of figure ground and, and space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't know if I've always, I guess I have always had a, you know, a sense of uh, figure ground and space. I've definitely ha always had a sense of space. Yeah, always, Sometimes maybe not always, but the, it comes yeah. and goes. It comes and goes. Um, and yeah, lately it's like, um, yeah, there's been a, the, the figuration's probably been a lot more overt, I guess, in, in the more recent work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, and, and again, you know, that, that all that stuff kind of, I feel like a lot of this stuff, uh, a lot of the images kind of like they, they're almost like they, they come, they're like last minute things, you know, it's like they come together, like kind of at the end. Mm -hmm. 
because uh, because you know that there's like you know like I said there's like six or seven paintings under these things you know and they're like you know um, there's aspects of those those paintings that you know show through in the final thing but um, but that that final kind of figure often is like uh, it comes together like kind of late in the process. Yeah, this is a yeah. this is a great painting. Um, so Pam, you have also been sort of, it's interesting to move, you know, when you move back and forth from an image, I'm seeing these connections of parts say here, and then, you know, to the connection of parts here. Um, tell me a little bit about how uh, this painting came about and the sort of two part aspect of, uh, of this piece. Um, well, this is a painting that's actually about <clears throat> um, 15 inches tall, but um, it's, it's a painting I made after a series of diptychs that were much larger from a show earlier this year. And um, I've always um, kind of liked thinking about collage a little bit in my work or, or putting two things together that mm -hmm. that maybe were made separately or exist separately and um but still kind of doing that within a, a painted surface not actually adding other materials but but thinking about form and color and shape and how they can kind of move and collide and join or or break and so um i um this is actually two separate small um stretchers that I stretch linen over and then join them together when um, hanging them, but working on them separately a little bit. And your presentation here has been interesting because, um, you know, we did a beautiful show with some of your circular pieces earlier this summer, and um, we are going to be doing a solo show with you that opens December 18th, so just here in a couple weeks, called Wis Window Prism Eyes. How is it working for you to have some pieces in the fair and some pieces in the show or, you know, are, how are your ideas sort of flowing together? Um, well, um, I've been working on these paintings this year since um, I, I had a, a solo show in um, January, February or into March earlier this year. And so, um, I kind of am jumping off that last body of work that I mentioned made up of diptychs, but um, but kind of went back to working with these circular stretcher frames and um, I was able to work on them at home um, a little bit to some of the smaller ones and um, there's always like a lot of activity and movement and um, making the pieces too while I'm kind of you know, putting them flat on the ground or leaning them or tipping them or turning them. So there's a lot of um, change and, and movement. Um, I've been thinking um, about, you know, working at home and at the studio and um, thinking about windows. I, I think we mentioned that a little bit in the writing for the press release, but kind of looking outwards and um, these um, windows in my studio have been pretty influential for me. They um, for a long time were covered with graffiti and um, so this is actually a, an image of the process of removing the graffiti but I had a um, rectangular structure frame around the studio and it happened to be very similar proportions to one of the panes of glass in my studio so I decided to use that um, sort of isolated frame of the window to um, sort of serve as a jumping off point um, for making this painting and thinking about color and this kind of random composition and how light passes through that window and time of day and um, different um, color of light in the particular day kind of affects how you see that that window and color and sort of let that come into the And this piece is in fact called prism and it's a we have a few really nice shots of it where you can see how you work and how you've poured. Do you want to talk a little bit about how you manipulate um, the and push these these liquid pours? Uh, sure. Um, so this um, painting, um, um, just being a regular polygon, which I usually don't work on, but it, it sort of felt like it had a logic to it, a balance. And mm -hmm. so um, I, um, 
kind of started thinking about it as like um, a, a prism in a way or, or how light might um, break apart through glass or manipulation of light. And, and so um, it, it kind of became like just the study of kind of a color in a way, but um, also I like to mix a lot of pigments with mediums um, and sort of see what happens as they um, kind of can flow or disperse or sometimes coagulate or sometimes blend. And, and so that kind of process of experimentation is part of that, that pouring process and not always knowing exactly what will happen, but um, yeah. Kind of having a control and lack of there's an incredible feeling of space that's created not only from the ground but also the opacity of a given paint or the transparency of a paint in this one i mean the play between the the right and left sides of the circle as it kind of opens inward is just gorgeous oh thanks yeah there's a lot of play with um opacity and transparency and how the paint um, reflects light. I often mix some oils or different mediums and so I'm trying to um, create this this kind of movement that happens um, and um, also as you kind of walk by the painting or look at it from different angles it, it tends to kind of change and things appear and disappear I think as, as they reflect light. Kate, uh, Christy, we have some amazing paintings that you made this, uh, this year for the fair. And Portia was just at your studio yesterday. And I, this is a, for people to see, this is a big painting. It's 72 by 60. And I thought we could walk through some detail shots of this piece and just kind of talk about it. This painting is called Barry. Do you want to sort of walk us through the picture a little bit? Sure. Um, this painting started, uh, Sometimes previous paintings are jumping off points for me for beginning new work. So this one, uh, I had in mind a previous painting that I did called Overthinker, which was an, an orange painting with a horizontal figure um, and a sort of landscape. Um, so for this one, I was trying to create, um, there are a lot of moments of color. I mean, in this one and Black Sun, the, which you'll show eventually, but uh, a lot of moments of trying to create a sort of mystery, but with uh, using a color and like a sort of real life experience of it um, to sort of amplify that, which I guess what I mean is um, like looking at two complements, two complementary colors creates a sort of vibration, mm -hmm. but um, when I'm painting them, I'm also painting that halo, that vibration that would take place naturally. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm hoping that by looking at them for extended periods of time, the viewer can't tell the difference between the vibration that would occur naturally and the one that's painted. Mm -hmm. So they can't know whether what they're seeing is in the painting or in their mind. Yeah. Does that make sense? And why is that interesting to you? Um, because I think that that's an experience. Then it makes it an experience that can't be shared. Mm -hmm. And what do you mean by that? Um, well, I, I mean, in a real life way, it can't be shared. Um, because it's, it's, it's one that's, I guess that's what I mean uh, when I'm after a sort of intimate psychological space. Yeah. I've been fascinated by these kinds of incredible internal spaces that you create and really enjoyed not only visually following you, following you as a viewer and seeing these things, but also the way you talk about the work and the way you invite people to kind of navigate these spaces. Um, it's just, uh, it's very generous and, and really interesting. Thanks. Um, yeah, this is uh, Black Sun, which this one was a reiteration of of a, an earlier uh, Black Sun painting, which was much smaller. Um, but this one, the scale, which in person, these forms, uh, it becomes less, I think, it's still a landscape, uh, but I think the, the relation to the body and, and these forms become much more 
um, in relation to your own body when you look at it. Yeah, yeah, especially at that at the at when you're working at a larger scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Same with these. Um, this, have... Your sort of exploration of tool use crossed over in terms of depiction, like in a mo in a moment, say like down here, which is just really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, transparency becomes pretty important in like these more detailed moments, um, building up the color through layers of color. So it's, I guess, a little more of like a meta narrative within the overall picture. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this one is that was bold, or bulbs in blue. Mm -hmm. And then this one is dagger, which is a small painting. Um, eight by 10 inches. Mm -hmm. And I'm sort of hinting at different, uh, trying to hint at different, like representational, giving the viewer a sort of entry point, mm -hmm. but then pushing, pushing you out of that and making it pretty el elusive. Yeah, this painting, which is called Iceberg, is a real favorite to me. Um, it's really interesting in terms of why it, when you when you realize it's called iceberg and an, kind of answer that question for yourself it just changes this picture what's going on in this painting um this one is another tiny one um and i'm i think with newer work i'm seeing what happens when i uh i sort of allow things to just to sort of stop at a certain point versus mm -hmm. like over describing so this is maybe for me, at least in, in terms of my previous work, a little more spare or like uh, sort of like locked in. Um, and yeah, this one sort of began from just a single mark that extended from the center all the way out and then became more nuanced around the edges or more, more activity around the edges, but it sort of sl slows down in the center. Yeah. I keep coming back to the mystery of this one. It's interesting, you know, there's, they're all so good. And this one really has stuck, has stuck with me. Um, so what I usually keep these to 30 minutes. Um, I really appreciate everyone joining us here today. Um, did you guys have anything that you wanted to say before we went? I think we could hold it for a few more minutes for questions or did you have thoughts for each other or I'm sure we could talk all day. <laughs> no okay good well thank you everyone for joining us thank you our basel for uh having us in the fair and giving us a chance to do this walkthrough thank you holly and katie and pam and tomary and christy i really value showing you guys and it's been amazing having you be my art world during covid it's been just a real pleasure and our hearts really go out to people who are dealing with COVID and thinking about that right now. And we're just really glad that everyone could join us. So stay safe and thank you for joining us. And if you have questions about anything you saw here today, just let me know. Holly and Christy and Katie and Pam all have shows coming up with me. Tom Marie has a show coming up with Miles McHenry in New York. So just uh, keep us posted. All right, everybody. Take care. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.